We're going to pick our finance series back up this morning now. No one knows their finances better than my next guest this morning. Roxanne is a certified financial planner. She has owned her own business since 1982. As I mentioned before, Roxanne's philosophy is that you work hard for your money, but in reality, your money should be working hard for you. Today, we're going to focus on why you should start saving for retirement now. Roxanne, it's a pleasure having you back with me today. Thank you. Thanks mm -hmm. so much, Jenna. I'm glad to be here. All right, Roxanne, now, I understand that there was a number of workers that were surveyed, okay, and they were asked how confident they were that they and their spouse would have enough money for retirement. What was the outcome of this survey? Well, the survey was done by the Employee Benefit Research Institute, and they've been doing them for a number of years, and they went back 18 years to 1995, and they looked at the results. And what they found was people are much less confident today. Back in 1995, you had 21% of people saying, I'm very confident that we can afford to retire. Today, that number is down to 13%. 51% of people in 1995 said that they were somewhat confident. Today, that number is down to 38%, Jenna. And then what was really surprising is in 1995, only 8% of people said they weren't confident at all, and today that number's up to 28%. Wow, so the numbers have mm. definitely, definitely dropped. Roxanne, mm -hmm. what would you say mm -hmm. is the main mm -hmm. reason behind mm -hmm. people feeling so more insecure? Well, you know, Jenna, there's a number of reasons. Number one, we've had three financial crises in the last decade. Mm -hmm. You know, you think back to the technology bubble that crashed in 2000, then we had the housing bubble, which started to decline in 2005. And then thirdly, you know, we had the stock market really big decline in 2008, 2009. So what's the result of that? Well, you know, the government has been trying to spur growth. Mm -hmm. The economy is still soft, Jenna, and people are still finding it difficult to find jobs. So unemployment is still higher than it should be, and underemployment which means people working part-time jobs because they can't find full-time jobs mm -hmm. is prevalent. And those folks don't have retirement benefits. Mm -hmm. How would you say mm -hmm. demographics mm -hmm. play into mm -hmm. the insecurities, you Roxanne? Know, demographics do play in. You know, it's interesting, Jenna, this past weekend, I was reading the New York Times, and today, only 20% of individuals between the ages of 18 and 29 are married. They're living at home longer. They're taking longer to get through college. They've got, you know, bigger college debts. They're changing jobs more often. And many of, again, of those jobs don't have retirement benefits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so that, people are feeling less secure. Then you've got, on the opposite end of the spectrum, people who are age 65, and they're saying, because of the financial crises that occurred in the last decade, I can't afford to retire. So they're working longer. And then you've got a third factor that plays into this, which is that people are living so much longer. Mm -hmm. You know, how old is the oldest person that you know today? I would say probably mm -hmm. maybe 95. 95, yeah. 95, 96. So. Yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. a common number. Mm -hmm. I have lots of clients who have parents that are 95 or 98. I have one whose mom is 102 and still doing fabulously well. That's awesome, but it, but it is so true. Like yeah. people definitely are living so much longer nowadays than they used to. So they are. So that means if they retire in their sixties, their money has to last twenty, thirty, forty years. Mm -hmm. So saving now today is even more critical than it was previously. So Roxanne, mm -hmm. since it's so critical, mm -hmm. how can one start saving now for retirement? Well, you know, Jenna. Let's talk about savings for retirement. There are essentially three, it's like a three-legged stool that we utilize for retirement savings. Number one, if you're working, you're putting money into Social Security. You're putting in 6.2% of your pay and your employer's matching that at 6.2%. You may have an employer that has a retirement plan where they're contributing some money and then you're able to contribute money. If not, then you can open your own retirement accounts. And the, you know, the third stool would, besides Social Security, a retirement account would be your own personal savings. So you really have to become responsible in large part for yourself. Mm -hmm. Could you give us an example of how mm -hmm. a retirement plan would work, Roxanne? Well, sure. Let me talk first, Jenna, about something that's really important for people to understand, which is the compounding of money. You know, if you take a look at how money grows, 
if you, there's a rule of 72 and you take your average annual return and you divide that into 72, Jenna. So if, say someone's receiving a 10% annualized rate of return, 10 divided into 72 would mean that their money would double in 7.2 years. If they're getting an 8% rate of return, it'd take nine years. So I'm gonna give you an example of two people, two women. Uh, let's use their names, Susan and Elaine. Mm -hmm. Susan decides that she's gonna start saving when she's 25 years old. And she decides to save $200 a month. And she does that until she's age 65. Her account compounds at an 8% average annual rate of return. So at age 45, she's put aside $48,000 a year, or $48,000, $2,400 a year times 20 years. And that account has compounded to a little over $118,000. The other person, Elaine, at age 25 said, I'm not ready to start saving, retire saving for retirement, so she waits till she's 45. At age 45, she starts putting aside monies, the same $2,400 a year, at age 65, she's got the $118,000 if her money compounds at 8%. But Susan, who started at age 25, she's put aside that money for that 40-year period. She's got over $702,000, or wow. almost five times more money because she started younger. Wow. So all I can say is people really need to take a look at, can I afford to start saving today? And I believe everybody can do so. Mm -hmm. You need to learn to pay yourself first. Now, the mm -hmm. amount that you said that mm -hmm. she was saving a year, 2400 Correct. What does that break down to on a daily basis, Roxanne? Well, on a daily basis, Jenna, it's only $6.57. You know, when I look around Key West, I say, if I want to go out for a glass of wine, it's going to be difficult for me mm -hmm. to buy a glass of wine for $6.57. So you can't. Can <laughs> so can I afford to give up a glass of wine a day? Mm -hmm. Or if I, you know, if I stop in at Starbucks for coffee, can I afford to give up my latte, you know, which might cost 4 or $5? You know, you have to take a look at what can I decide to put away? How can I save, myself, save money for myself first mm -hmm. for the long term that's really going to benefit me? And I think everybody can do that. Everybody can look at their budget and decide to cut out something to save for the future. Absolutely. $6.40 a day. $6.57 a day. Okay, $6.57. <laughs> That's still not bad. <laughs> it's really close. It's very close. <laughs> and not bad. So start saving now. Roxanne, you're going to come back on in a couple weeks. That's what okay. are we going to focus on next time? Next time we're talking about IRA accounts. Mm -hmm. Regular traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs. What is the difference between the two and how can they benefit you? Great. And of course, if you want any more information on Roxanne, just check out the information that you've been seeing on the bottom of the screen. Thank you so much for being on this morning. Thank you so much, Jenna. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back after these messages with Liz Young from the Council of the Arts. Stay with me.